Welcome to Honest News. Uh, for some of you that are listening um, in any other place other than YouTube, whether you're listening on Facebook, iTunes, um, Spotify, wherever you're listening, um, you may not be able to uh, find all of the uh, broadcasts in that location that you're listening in. So, for instance, if you're in Facebook and you're listening, uh, you most likely won't find all of the broadcast there. So search Honest News uh, Network uh, on YouTube and all of the uh, broadcasts you will find there. Um, and they are archived based on each year. So you'll find you'll find that there's a playlist for each year. I think dating back all the way to 2015 or 16, um, maybe even 14, I can't remember now. But um, that's the best place to hear sermons going all the way back several years. Um, these other places, uh, you know, like iTunes and, uh, and Spotify, these are different uh, venues or different places uh, that we just recently uh, our videos or our, our, our broadcast has been uh, uploaded to. So um, just wanted to put that out there for you that may be interested in listening to previous messages. I wanted to thank our listeners for your support of this ministry. Uh, without, without your help, without your support, we couldn't continue to do this because we wouldn't be able to be free enough to be able to broadcast uh, as we do if we were uh, having to keep a regular uh, daily uh, job. But we really have felt from the Lord to just put our trust in Him and that, uh, you know, the Scripture says the workman is worthy of his hire. And how many know that it is work? The ministry is work. Um, and um, the Scripture makes it very clear that, uh, that to give honor where honor is due. Amen. And that's that's between you and the Lord, whether you believe that this ministry is worthy of your support. That's between you and the Lord. But as I said yesterday, that if God placed it on your heart to give to this ministry and you're not obeying him, uh, that's not going to bode well for you. Amen. We've had people contact us and tell us the Lord put it on their heart to support this ministry. So we know the Lord is stirring up his people to bless this ministry so that we can work for the Lord. Um, I have a very serious message for you today, something the Lord poured into my spirit. And I trust you will be attentive to hear what the Spirit is saying. Not what man is saying, but what the Spirit is saying, what the Lord is saying. So, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get into the Word. We're going to begin our reading in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and beginning with verse 8. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. The voice of my beloved. Behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. And reading again in verse 10, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. The Lord is waking up his people. How many know that? In this hour, the Lord is awakening those that are willing to be awakened. And let me say this, if Jesus doesn't awaken you, you're not going to be woken up. Are you listening to me? 
If the Lord doesn't wake you up, you're not going to be woken. You're going to go on and sleep. And notice what it is that's waking her up. It's his voice. It's his voice, but it's not just his voice. I believe also it is a shaking. I don't believe that when Jesus came to the disciples in the garden that he just said, Peter, wake up with a whisper, right? I don't think he just came to Peter and said, wake up, sleepyhead, right? He came to them three times and he awoke them three times. And they were fast asleep. They were sunken into sleep. Deep sleep. It said they were sleeping for sorrow. In other words, they're not just going to wake up because the Lord's whispering, hey, wake up. Wake up. No, I believe the Lord the closer they got to the hour of his arrest, the closer they got to the time where Judas would show up with the soldiers, I believe that his voice became more stern. Amen? Became more, even even maybe a little louder. Are you listening? Maybe a a little more urgent. And... I don't believe the first time that Jesus came to the... I I may be wrong, but I don't think Jesus, the first time when he came to the disciples and found them asleep, I don't believe that he shook them the first time. How many know the Lord is gentle, right? But I believe that as they got closer and closer and closer to that hour... To the time where Judas would show up and betray Jesus with a kiss. Jesus was going to become more and more sorrowful. The scripture says great sorrow came upon Jesus. He was sorrowing unto death. Now, you may not take the gospel serious. You may not take even your salvation serious, but he did. He does. He was sorrowing even unto death. Are you listening, folks? As it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 13, verse 36. Let's actually go back a a verse to verse 35. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight. Notice again, no mention of the first watch. Pay attention to that. No mention of the first watch. Just like in Luke chapter 12, the Lord says, if he shall come in the second watch or the third watch. Here again in Mark chapter 13, verse 35, he says, if he shall come in the evening or the midnight. Or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Notice the scriptures here folks, there's no mention here of a wedding. No mention of a bride. But yet we know something is happening before midnight. Long before midnight, something is taking place. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or at the or in the morning lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping did jesus find the disciples sleeping and what i say unto you i say unto all watch 
watch. You can't watch if you're asleep. You cannot watch if you're asleep. Lest coming suddenly. I believe Jesus came to the disciples suddenly. He came upon them suddenly in the garden and found them sleeping. How important is it to watch and pray? How important is it? Mark chapter 14, verse 37. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Listen to this. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. Listen. And when he returned, he found them sleep again. For their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. I believe it became more urgent as the night went on. I believe it became more urgent each time Jesus came to them. Even as we're going to see an urgency in this hour. Oh yes. We're going to see a shaking on this earth, people. A shaking, a great shaking. What is that shaking? That's the Lord waking up those that will awaken. He's not doing the shaking himself at first. At first, it's, he's, shake, he's allowing the devil to do the shaking. But God himself, the Lord, is not going to let the devil do the shaking in your life if you'll allow the Lord's shaking to wake you up. And you don't want the devil's shaking. Trust me, you'd rather have the Lord's shaking. You'd rather fall into the hands of God than to fall into the hands of the devil. Are you listening to me? But can you see how Jesus came to the disciples to awaken them in the garden? Can you see Jesus shaking? Not shaking in a sense of violently to hurt, but gently. But earnestly and with an urgency. I believe that the voice of our beloved, even as Jesus came to Simon Peter, even as he came to the disciples in the garden, wake up, wake up, Peter, wake up, Simon, wake up. Watch with me. Watch with me. Watch one hour with me. Watch and pray with me. Can you hear the sound of your beloved? Can you hear him? And it says that when he came to them the third time, found them sleeping, he said to them, rise up. Rise up. It's time to go. It's exactly what he's saying in Song of Solomon. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Now, when Jesus came to the disciples in the garden and he said, rise up, Judas was going to show up with the soldiers and Jesus would be arrested. And the disciples would flee for their lives. But in the book of Song of Solomon, when the Lord says, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away, he's not talking about you and I being imprisoned or talking about you and I being even persecuted. How many know that? It's the same thing the Lord's saying when he says, 
when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up. Your redemption is drawing near. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Now, we have the verse of Scripture that ties all that together. When the Lord says, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? I believe with all my heart, the Spirit of God is stirring, is shaking. Now, everything that can be shaken is going to be shaking. From the stock market, the economy, everything, it's all going to be shaken. The banks, everything's going to be shaken. But that's the devil shaking those things. Listen to me. Jesus is going to shake his little bride, but not violently to hurt. Amen? Not violently to destroy. Now, he may shake some things out of your life that are distractions. Amen? He may shake some things. But how many know the Lord is very gentle? And he would come to his beloved very gently. It's his voice. That's what gets her attention. She says, my heart is awake. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It's the voice of my beloved. Does his voice get your attention? Does Jesus' voice get your attention? Do you rejoice when you hear his voice? Do you know his voice when you hear it? Do you hear his voice right now? On this broadcast, right now, do you hear his voice? Do you hear what he's saying? Rise up, my love. Not rise up and come away yet, but rise up and pray. Wake up and watch and pray. That's what the Lord is saying. Watch with me. Pray with me. Men are always to pray and not to faint. Paul said, pray without ceasing. This is the one thing that we are not doing, people. Not diligently. Not consistently. Right? We're not being consistent. Our prayer life is not consistent. What does our prayer life consist of? A few minutes? How fervent are we in our prayer? Do we pray fervently? Do we pray fervently? Remember, the Lord says he answers the prayer of the righteous that pray fervently. The prayer of the righteous that are prayed fervently, earnestly. There's got to be a fervency in our prayer. Amen? Even as the disciples came to Jesus while he was asleep in the bottom of the boat, they had to earnestly awake him. They couldn't just lightly say, Jesus, Jesus. You know, whispering, Lord, we don't mean to wake you up, but the ship's about to go down. Now, can you just see the picture? Lord, Lord, why don't you wake up? Don't you care? We perish. Is that the way your prayer life is? Shall not the Lord avenge his elect that cry in him day and night, though he be along with them? Have you been crying out to the Lord that he might spare you? That he might spare you. The lukewarmness in the body of Christ is causing the Lord to get sick, to spew out the church. 
into the tribulation hour. Can you imagine how bad the church had to get, how lukewarm the church had to get for the Lord to spew it out? Those are those that are in Christ. He's spewing them out of him. That's right. Spewing them out. They were once in Christ. Now they're being spewed out. They're asleep. Their lamps are going out. Just like the disciples in the garden, sleeping. That doesn't mean that you're not eating and drinking, go to work and you don't go uh, on vacations and you don't, your arms don't move and your, your legs don't move. No, it's talking about a spiritual slumber. Yeah, just because you're even doing religious activities, even just because you read your Bible and pray does not mean you're awake. The Lord would have fully awake us. Alarm. What's it going to take to wake us up? What's it going to take to shake us, to wake us up, people? I'm just wondering... Just how violently, without hurting the disciples, did Jesus shake Peter? I'm just thinking about the seriousness of that hour. Do you think Jesus didn't put his hand upon Peter's shoulder and shake him a little? The hand of God speaks of God's power. Amen? Amen? We need a shaking. How many know that? We need a shaking, people. We need to be shaken out of our apathy. Out of our lukewarmness. If we are not woken up, we're going to sleep all the way up to the midnight hour. Are you listening to me? The Lord is wakening us with His voice. And if that doesn't work, He'll waken us with His power, with His hand, with His right hand of power. And if that doesn't work, you sleep on to the midnight hour to where He catches you up in the middle of the air. And if that doesn't work, you'll end up in the great tribulation have to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I want to choose his voice. That's that's what I want to do. Is that going to be enough? Lord, is that going to be enough? Is his voice enough to wake us? Is his voice enough to get our attention? I wonder if that's going to be enough, people. He came to them and he found them sleeping. I wonder what the attitude of the disciples was. What was the attitude of Simon Peter when Jesus came to him the third time? What was was his attitude? It's kind of like, I think, a teenager that's being woke up to go to school. Right? Mom and dad trying to get him out of bed. Is that the mentality? Is that the attitude of God's people? We don't want to wake up. Right? Why is it that the disciples kept going to sleep? It said they were sleeping for sorrow. They were very sad. Jesus told them he was about to be delivered into the hands of the sinners. He he told them that the soldiers were coming. He told them Judas was coming. And it says the power of darkness had came upon them. They felt that darkness. They felt that oppression of the devil. Amen? Amen? 
Jesus had to pray through. Jesus prayed more earnestly. As it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground, his sweat was beating off of his body like drops of blood. It wasn't literally blood that was pouring out of Jesus' veins or out of his sweat, out of his pores. But the sweat was so beaded up, so thick, that it was like blood dropping. You talk about pressure. You talk about weight and pressure and oppression. Jesus had a decision to make in that garden, folks. Didn't you know that? His decision would determine whether you and I were going to be saved or not. That's right. Jesus is the one that said, Father, let this cup pass from me. What cup? What cup was it that he wanted to pass from him? Was it all together about his suffering? Or was it more about the souls that would be lost if he didn't go through with it? Every one of us would have been lost if Jesus did not surrender to the cross. Are you listening to me? No man took his life from him. Nobody forced him to go to the cross. He laid down his life. I asked the Lord years ago, I said, God, why did you wait so long to send Jesus? Why? You know what he said to me? He said, I was counting the cost. I was counting the cost. Are we counting the cost? I think a lot of times we take it for granted. We don't really understand the price that we must pay. What's that price? Watch and pray. That's the price that we have to pay. Amen? Denying ourselves, taking up our own cross, watching and praying. If the disciples would have denied themselves in the garden and watched and prayed, they would have not been afraid that night in the garden. Same thing goes for us. We won't be afraid if we will watch and pray. There was something that Jesus said in the garden that you really we, we need to take really pay close attention to. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. Essentially, Jesus emptied himself in that garden. He emptied out himself. And every one of us must come to that place to empty out ourself. To empty out our own will. Our own desires. What we want. Jesus did not come to do his own will. He came to do the will of the Father. Jesus was not struggling with the cost of the suffering he would have to endure. That's not what he was dealing with in the garden. The price that Jesus was dealing with is separation from the Father. That's what he was dealing with. He had never been separated from the Father. And for this purpose, and this purpose only, we hear the Lord crying out on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He became sin. That doesn't mean that he sinned. That doesn't mean the Son of God became sin. The word became means he took upon him the guilt. He took upon him our sins. 
And the wages of sin is what? It's death. He tasted death for every man. Separation from God. That's what Jesus was contemplating. Are you listening to me? He knew that all the souls of mankind would either be saved or perish if he did not go through with it. That's right. Did you know that your life, what you do with your life, will determine where somebody's soul will spend eternity? Yeah, God will raise somebody up, take your place. But listen to me, people. We have a great responsibility. There are certain people out there that God would have for us to reach, that only we can reach. But God can still raise someone up to take our place. I know we want to say that it all hinges and all depends on Jesus. and Jesus is the Savior. And, but He makes you and I soul winners. And there's something going on right now in the church and in God's people where we just don't realize our responsibility. We don't realize how great that responsibility is. There's, the laborers are certainly few right now. Even though the fields are white, the labors are few. The soul winners are few. And you certainly can't win a soul to Jesus if you're not saved yourself. If you're just professing that you're saved. Many will profess unto the Lord, I never, uh, or will profess unto the Lord, Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? And he'll profess unto them, I never knew you. It's not enough to profess that you're a Christian. Amen? There's a lot of professors today, but where are the possessors? Where are those that have, are possessed of God, possessed of the Holy Ghost? Where the Holy Ghost has taken possession of the purchased possession? You're not your own. You've been bought with a price to glorify God in your body. You and I are soldiers on the battlefields. And we are supposed to be watching and praying. And we're supposed to be overcoming our own wills, our our own will and our own weakness to fail. Right? Right? Because if we don't do the will of God the Father and do our own will, we will fall short. We will fail. We all have to come to this place of Gethsemane, this place of crushing. We all have to come to this place called Gethsemane, every one of us. That's where We lose our will for his will. Amen. Hallelujah. In the garden. We hear the songwriter put it this way. I come to the garden alone. Right? While the dew is still on the roses. Amen. The sound I hear. Falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. Can you hear his voice? Rise up, watch and pray, wake up, wake up. They that sleep, sleep in the night, the scripture says, but we that are of the day, we're not sleeping. Amen. My pastor said 
Years ago, the Lord revealed to him, the majority of the church will not wake up without great persecution. And that's exactly what we see in the book of Revelation. When the devil realized he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, the church, that brought forth the man-child, the bride, the remnant. The church is going to be persecuted, going to flee into the wilderness, into a place where she's going to be fed, nourished for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Brothers and sisters, while the church sleeps and goes to sleep, according to Song of Solomon, the bride is waking up. She's half asleep and half awake. She says, I sleep, but my heart waketh. She's waking up. She's not going to sleep. She's waking up. How do we know she's waking up? Because the scripture says she fully woke up and ran to the door and opened the door and he wasn't there. He had withdrawn himself and he was gone. For her to get up out of that bed and come to the door and open the door, she had to be awake. But before that, her heart was awake. Amen? We need to be fully awake. Fully awake. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. It shouldn't have to take a shaking of a violence of persecution to awake us. Just that gentle nudge, that gentle shaking of the Lord Jesus should be enough. Amen? Wake up. Watch with me. Pray with me. Wake up. Hallelujah. That's who he is. He's gentle. He's gentle. Praise the Lord, people. Jesus is gentle. That's been my experience. He's been so gentle with me. David said, thy gentleness hath made me great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You look at some of the places, David, in song, in, in, um, in the Psalms, he doesn't look like he's going through a really good time. Some really hard places where David was going through. At times feeling like he was drowning. He even said, I'm consumed by the blow of your hand. But he says, thy gentleness made me great. Yeah, that flesh will feel like even God's gentleness is harsh. Get rid of that flesh and you'll realize just how gentle God is. Amen. Oh, yes. He is gentle. Anything is better than hell. Did you hear what I said? I said anything is better than hell and the lake of fire forever. Paul even said he would turn over some to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Oh, that's harsh. Well, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? These, these locust, scorpion creatures that are going to come up out of the bottomless pit that are being led by Apollyon, stinging men. They're going to sting men. And men are going to want to die. That's gentle. Comparing to the alternative. Amen. Gnawing on their, their, their tongues for pain. Cursing God. Desiring to die. Because of the pain. The sting of a scorpion. Boils breaking out on their bodies. That's gentle comparing to the alternative. Is anybody out there listening to me? 
God is going to remember mercy even in his wrath. Don't tell me God is not love. Don't tell me God is not merciful. Maybe you're going through some things right now. Pain and sorrow and suffering. That's gentle comparing to the alternative. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the pain is, no matter what the suffering is, it is gentle. When you look, when you really understand what the alternative is, folks, how can you murmur and complain? How can you say God is harsh? God is a mean God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, people. I saw my pastor with cancer in his bones. His whole body had been taken over by cancer. Not one time did I ever, not once, did he ever speak negative of God. Not once. Amen? He retained his integrity like Job. All the suffering he had been through, losing children. I was there for some of that suffering. He fell off an 80-foot cliff under shale rock, broke almost every bone in his body. Listen to me. But God was gentle. God was gentle. God was gentle. It's better than the alternative. Hell. The lake of fire. Forever. I don't know what you're going through out there. I don't know what you're suffering, what you're experiencing. But I will tell you this. It's better than hell. It's better than the alternative. Hallelujah. Peter denied the Lord that night. But before he denied the Lord, he disobeyed the Lord. The Lord told him to watch and pray, and he disobeyed the Lord. He was already in sin. He was already in sin like the rest of the disciples that fell asleep. They disobeyed the Lord. In the military, in this day, in this hour, if you fall asleep during the time of war... You're not court-martialed. You're shot on sight in the time of war. That's right. That is the law of the military. If you fall asleep on your post, they will shoot you. Are you listening to me? Peter fell asleep. But worse than that, he denied he even knew the Lord. Amen? Thank God he didn't become a full-blown traitor. Thank God he wasn't like Judas Iscariot colluding with the enemy. Anybody listening to me out there? We've got those in this hour that are colluding with Russia, colluding with the enemy. thinking that they can join Russia to bring peace on earth. They, they know better than everybody else. Been planning this for 30 years. Didn't work for Judas, colluding with Rome, colluding with the religious system. That's what Trump's doing right now. He's colluding. Not just with Russia, but he's colluding with the papacies. He's, he's, he's colluding with the Jesuit priesthood. How many know it's the Jesuits that run the world? How many know that? How many know Rothschild is a Jesuit? How many know that? They hate Christ. They hate what Martin Luther stood for. They hate the Reformation. They hate the Lord. They are anti-Christ. And Trump is one of them. And so is in Pence. Now Pence is running for president. 
You say, well, I don't see him running for president. He's been running for president all along. He's just waiting for Donald Trump to stumble. And I think it's going to happen. I think Pence will become the president. He's more dangerous than Trump. People, do you realize what's going on here? Colluding. Traitors. Treason. Not just in the United States. It's happening all over this earth right now to bring about a new world order. Selling out their own country. Selling out their own citizens for a new world order. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Oh, they know better than God. Yeah. Bring about a one world religion, one world everything, one world government, one world monetary system. Just like they thought they knew better when they were building the Tower of Babel. It'll never work without God. I don't care what you do, it'll never work without God. Jesus is so gentle. The scripture says that he went with them, working with them. So gentle, so long-suffering. It doesn't say that they went with Jesus after the resurrection, after Pentecost. It says he went with them, working with them, with signs following. How long must the Lord go with us, brothers and sisters? When are we going to follow him? When? Over and over he says, follow me, follow me. Lord, Lord, I got an idea. I want you to come and check it out, Lord. Even the prophet went with the young prophets. That's right. And in the process, they lost the axe head. Now, back then, it wasn't easy to get an axe head. Couldn't just go down to the store and buy an axe head. They lost an axe head that was borrowed. Are you listening? And the man of God said, where did you lose it? Where? Where? Show me where it fell. Show me the exact spot where you lost it. And I believe that's what God is saying in this hour. He's saying, show me where you lost it. I already know where you lost it, but be honest, where'd you lose it? Where'd you lose it? Where'd you lose that relationship with Jesus? Prayers just become a form, a ritual, right? Prayer is just something you do because that's what religious people do. But it's not out of a relationship with Christ. Everything you and I do should come out of our relationship with the Lord. It should come out from the innermost being, brothers and sisters, We should be moved with compassion. Not moved by our flesh. Not moved by our feelings. Not moved to pray. Amen. Because we feel like praying. But because the Holy Ghost is upon us and moving us. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is drawing us. Hallelujah. Mmm. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Draw me. I'll run after you. Draw me. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I got to follow him. He woke me up one morning. The Lord woke me up, and these are the only words he said to me. He said, follow me. 
follow me. And what he was really saying to me is, don't follow man. Follow me. Don't follow organizations. Don't follow what man is saying. Follow me. Follow me. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Follow me. Don't follow Brother Joseph. Don't follow this ministry. Don't follow this broadcast. Don't lean on this broadcast like you don't have to have a relationship with the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Oh, beloved, listen to me. The Lord is getting our attention. He is getting our attention. Are we going to move from the realm of being hearers to doers? Are we going to be doers? Are we? Are we going to be obedient and watch and pray? I hear him. Watch with me. Pray with me. Pray. Watch and pray. And if I don't watch and pray, then I'm disobeying him. See, he didn't tell me if I feel like it. Because you're never going to feel like it. The flesh is weak. But if you'll do it because he says to do it, he'll give you the strength. He'll give you the power. Oh, yes, he will. If the Lord moves upon your heart to pray, he will quicken you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. That same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, he'll quicken you. If he dwells in you, he'll quicken you. Hallelujah, people. We can't sleep as others sleep. We can't. We cannot sleep. We cannot sleep. We cannot depend on persecution to wake us up. It's going to take the power of God to wake us up, people. I believe that. My pastor said years ago, he said, it's going to take more than preaching to wake the church up. It's going to take more. And it seems to me the church is going more and more to sleep every day. Closing their eyes more and more. Closing their ears more and more. Every day. How do we know that we're fully awake? There's only one way we can know that we're fully awake. We don't sin anymore. Awake to righteousness and sin not. You won't be sinning if you're fully awake. Amen. You won't be doubting God. You won't have unbelief if you're truly awake. So to the measure that you are living for God in true holiness and righteousness will determine how awake you are. If you're still sinning, you're not fully awake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, people. Sorrow is a strong emotion. And it comes from fear. But he said, perfect love casteth out fear. Sorrow tried to get a hold of even Jesus in that garden, but he prayed through it. He overcame it. Amen? And you and I can too. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, pray through. 
overcome even as he overcame. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.